Mbogoto Vugani. Ani live ayini live la mage wetu ati banfa na banfa na buyani kai. Fagani imbe wienu emsabatini likuba iminwe yenu ainge ne emsabatini le singi sosi vanzi sake. Dimbogoto tine vele singi wa imadvo taga ati la tembegi le si ali masi pege gula si nagegele si site futi na laba kula. Siati misela na la pogonke se gushabalele sate sa tfola indlela ye gukubega ngisho na la pose si chaselo ange matvoza la matzala asi ketzela butfo pibe tfu sa jeja. Sa kubega sa guchengi sa gubegetela nen saga nipo guchabuli sa ganyene guchambe la gonke. Si timbogo tfuti. Imbela bakti nsile umabati watinza umfati utinze imbogotvo. Sifunzi segile. Kusebenda nekwe tsembega. Siti mbogotvo tsinesibo pezu kwa mkono. Bo mage bo mtandazo. Single ondalo nje. Watinza umfati utinze imbogotvo. Good evening and welcome to yet another life-changing episode of A Kappa with Nom Gebo. Today we are beginning today's episode in style and we are doing it differently. We are starting with a little injection of inspiration, of spoken words from a very talented poet and artist. We have Zelim Luli in studio with us and it's, I don't want to mispronounce your, your, your surname, it's Mrs. Mrs. Lehue. Lehue. Zeli, thank you so much for joining me in the studio today. What a beautiful, beautiful poem written by you. But before you say anything else, I want to also just add a few more accolades about this woman because there's so much that I really want the viewers today to learn and know more about Zeli. So allow me to just go through some really beautiful words that I found here, you know, that speak and uh, actually unpack, you know, for us who Zeli is. Zeli, a talented poet and artist from Eswatini. Her lyrical poems has captivated audiences, leaving them wanting more. Here are some details about her. Her poetic performances. She has graced stages with poetic brilliance at events such as I Am Woman Conference 2023. Her performances promise unique and unforgettable journey through her words. Zeli's poetry resonates with themes of empowerment, womanhood, and self-discovery. Her work encourages listeners to embrace their own parts and find strength in their stories. Whether on stage or in conversation, Zeli Mluli continues to inspire and uplift those who encounter her art. Whenever she opens her mouth, people want to hear what she is saying. Each time she speaks, those listening to her get inspired. And I could never agree, I can never agree more. Because that is exactly how I feel each time I have the honor, you know, and the pleasure to be in any event where you are there as an artist, you know, to perform. You have been really inspirational. But Zeli, just taking you back, we just want to know who is Zeli Mluli? Where does she come from? Hmm. Thank you, Nomtebo, for having me today. Um, Zeli is from Llangano, born and bred in Llangano, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, then I went to Evelyn Baring High School and University and all of that. Then, yeah, I'm in Babani because of work. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist who's in here trying to push. Growing up as a young girl, you know, growing up in Llangano, as you said, you know, what was your inspiration, your everyday, what was that girl child like? What were your favorite things, you know, as a kid growing up? Um, I don't think, I, I don't know if I, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't remember if I really had, you know, favorite things and I'll be able to get because um, my dad was a mine worker, mm -hmm. so 
he wasn't getting paid that much. I think the most important thing for us was just to be able to go to school and he was able to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's what makes us, I mean, made us happy. Mm -hmm. Having school shoes, right. having a uniform that is not torn and being able to go to school. And so, for us, that was just the most important thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. And did that like make you happy, you know, as children? Because, you know, as children growing up, other children, you know, they look out for the small things, as you said, you yeah. know, the finer things, you know, yeah. having been able, you know, to get that, you know, takeaway food, being mm -hmm. able to wear the fanciest clothes if you're yeah. out of your uniform, yeah. you know. For you, did that have any impact or you were just grateful? Children. I think I was just a happy child, grateful, and I didn't even realize that this, we lacked something at that point, mm -hmm. you know, at that time. So I was a happy child. The most important thing for me was being able to go to school. I always knew that when my dad comes home in December, he'll mm -hmm. buy us clothes from Jet mm -hmm. uh, for Christmas. He tried his best, mm -hmm. you know, he tried his best with whatever money that he made. So. Right. I was a happy child. I know right. that for a fact that I was a happy child because Good. my parents, I mean, my parents can can still remember and they remind me all the time now because I have, uh, my daughter is three years old, so she's a mini me. My dad, my dad always says, this one is just like you because when I was young, I used to talk to myself quite a lot and mm -hmm. she does that. Right. I used to sing actually also, uh -huh. but I don't know why I never <laughs> pursued <laughs> so, it. Yeah, pursued that part. But I used to sing. I used to talk to myself quite a lot. I'll uh, maybe just have a few whatever stones and I'll talk to them, pretend that people. So I used to talk. I used to act. Mm -hmm. That's what my dad used to say. And they never understood you know, what was that all about till now? Yeah. Yeah. But the most important thing was that they probably just allowed you and just they let you be and talk to your stones and talk to yourself. Yeah. I think also, you know, looking back now, there's nothing that you can do. You can't stop a child who's born. If you are born an artist, you are born with that gift. There's nothing that a parent can do. Right. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned that, yeah, you're born with that gift. And I believe that at 10 years old, that is when you started pursuing, you know, poetry. Am I correct? Um, no, actually, first it was music. <laughs> it was the music. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I thought I was a musician till high school. Mm -hmm. Because even at secondary and high school, I used to sing at assembly. I would be one of those people, like teachers, sometimes they would just call him like, yeah, please sing the song for us. Because the one that, you know, you were singing assembly, Namusha, wow. You know, I used to think, I think I grew up thinking, it means I'm, I'm going to be a musician. And yeah. I used to sing in the in the choir, a church, you know, so I thought I was a musician. Poetry, um, I think poetry, actually, I realized I was a poet. <laughs> it's a long story, funny one also. Mm -hmm. I realized who I was when I was now at the University of Swaziland, Mbabane mm -hmm. campus, trying yeah. out nursing. That's okay. when I realized who I was. Is it? Yeah. So you've taken that route, try oh. out nursing. <laughs> Tell me about that. I could never imagine you <laughs> pursuing that career. Really. Actually, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's, a, it's about time now because honestly, I think that part should be included in my book. Yeah. If I write <laughs> a book or whatever. Yeah, I started, um, I went to the University of Swaziland where I did Emma Humanities one year. And then I realized, this is not it, man. But I just mm. didn't understand exactly what is it that I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it was just, it was in me. So I quit and they didn't call me there because at that time I had dreadlocks and mm. my dreadlocks had these shells on them. Mm. So the dean was calling me to find out how you are living. Are you living because you are going to, to for initiation or what? They wow. somehow, for That's some reason, it, and that was, yeah. that was just weird. I was like, no. I think I'm going to go try nursing. I think humanities are not good for me, but I'll go try out nursing. And mm. I went. And it didn't last also. Mm -hmm. uh, nursing, I was lost. I was lost. <laughs> right. And, um, but that's when I, that's where I discovered who I was. Because mm. when I was then doing that course that year, 
every time after class, I'll go to the library. Before I work on my assignments, I'll write something. Mm. So that's when I realized who I was and then I left. Yes. Yeah. My goodness, that to is pursue. quite a journey that you yeah. actually, you know, you went through, you know, especially the nursing. But I think you should include that in that book that's coming up because I know for sure a book is definitely in the pipeline. So you discover that, look, you are a poet, you're into writing. So what was the first piece that you wrote? Um, oh, gosh. I know that I wrote a piece called Life. Mm -hmm. Yes. I wrote that piece uh, immediately after I left nursing. That uh -huh. was actually when I started performing. That was one piece that right. I'll make sure Guti, I include uh -huh. because it, it spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I wrote a piece called Life, as it's up, blah, blah. blah. That's a piece that I, I wrote and it'll always be close to my heart. Most definitely, yeah. and it really yeah. should. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to learn more about Zeli, her journey, you know, in the arts and poetry. And, of course, wrapping shoulders with some very, very important people on the silver screen. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Being risky it means we not go away or gumula. Not if not send the It is an interesting journey, a journey that I cannot take alone, a journey that needs you and me. Your favorite show, Tangan and Kondo, cultivates and captivates talents of Emma Swati all over the country, be it poetry or craft. Make sure that you join me, Fortunate Mabuza, every Saturday, 4 p.m. on Eswati TV, Sibubo Sema Swati. If you've just joined us, you're watching A Cup Out with Nim Gebo, and today I'm having a wonderful, inspirational conversation with Adzeli. Trust me, we are going to have a life-changing half an hour today with all the conversations that we are having. It's really been, you know, it, feels, it just makes you feel good as a person. You know what they call a feel-good conversation. This is exactly <laughs> what's happening today in the studio. And before we went uh, on our break, we were talking about the first poem that you wrote called mm -hmm. A Life. Would you kindly recite that one for us, please? Sure. Life has its ups. I find them quite frequently. Sometimes they're surrounded by valleys. So reaching up, I find myself asking why, what do I do to guide my way through to the next one? Do I sit here for a time? Is there a plan, a better way through this value? I don't know. I just don't want to walk through to this next peak alone anymore. So I'm standing here upon this hill. I am searching, searching the skies for answers in my head. I shed a tear of thoughts gone by and I smile from time to time. Finding a place to call my own, I sit down my back against this wall, I kick some dirt and I grab a blade of grass. My head is tilting forward as I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Where is this train that moved me through time? Will it ever change? So in the midst of all this pain, the struggle and deceit, I talk to my soul, my God within me. He says, dear soul, you are not your body, but your soul, and it's all that matters. Thank you. 
Amazing. Totally amazing, enchanting, and beautiful. 2009, um, your life took a, a turn. You met Temba Mavosa. And um, I think that's another person you know, you know, who played a role, you know, in your life, and actually you making sure that you pursue, you know, your your poetry. Tell us about that. No, you did your research. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, rooted souls, mm -hmm. rooted souls changed my life. Actually, a lot of artists, yes. you know, life. I remember when we started at Rooted Souls, Temba Mavuso was the one who who. who um, started Rooted Souls, the founder of Rooted Souls. Uh, I remember when I joined Rooted Souls, at first I didn't even think I was a poet because, you know, but once they saw my work, Timber was like, no, you're going to perform. I remember I was supposed to perform that end of the month, that year. I was mm. actually even, it was on the posters and that day. I was like, I'm not going. <laughs> I remember I was like, I am not going because I just felt sick to my stomach. Like I couldn't, I just didn't want to go there and face people. Right. But then again, you know, he gave me chance after chance and I finally joined Rooted Souls. I remember I was the only girl there with what Kribo, was Bujebo, last yeah. man. And they welcomed me, Shem, right. Bang, Kulisile. I remember when we started Rooted Souls 2000, around 2009, 2012 we even made it to bushfire that was the first time we performed at bushfire mm -hmm. um, and that's a big stage yeah a very yeah big stage it was yeah how was that for you you know finally <sighs> just going into such a, a big stage i think at that time i didn't really understand i i, I don't think i i realized who I, I was at that time so all those things were just happening and it was like oh okay and, you know, yeah. but now looking back at it, no rooted, rooted souls. We actually performed three times that day, that that weekend for Bushfire. I remember at the fun, we played. Um, we did a theater thing, sort of a theater poetry, whatever mm -hmm. thing. And I was playing a pregnant woman. Zibo was my husband. Last man was stopping the wedding. Blackmore right. was the pastor. It was just, <laughs> it was beautiful. Yeah. Um, I think it was um, that was it was a beautiful experience. Though at that time, I'll say I still didn't I didn't know who I was at that time. Yeah. And it 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 has happened, you know, as along the way as I grow up, you know. But it, it took me a long time to realize who I was and my worth. So I was just going with the flow. Oh, yeah. well, performing it means I'm good. I'm mm. good. Fine. But you know, it it. It took me a long time to realize that my craft is... Yeah. yeah. So when did you realize who Zeli is? Getting in touch with that soulful part of you, because listening to you now, I can tell that you're referring to that Zeli, you know, that Zeli that's in there. Mm -hmm. When did that happen? To be honest, I, w I, I wouldn't say I'm sure of when did that happen, but, you know, as the years go by since, I mean, I started doing this around 2008, 2009, um, I didn't understand at that time, we'll see, this is very important, you know. I mm realized -hmm. probably, maybe I'll say COVID, I think, changed a lot for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also having kids, because I had, I had two kids before my marriage, right? Uh -huh. So when I had these two kids, because when I had those kids, I was still young myself, right? So now having these two kids, there's something that it does to yeah. me. Yeah. It like, it's, it's sort of like it unlocks something that you didn't realize. So having these two kids has made me actually realize who I am, mm -hmm. you know? At that time, it was having the kids hustling to either going to school as a single right. mother and all of that. Yeah. But now it's totally different. Mm -hmm. I can sit back. I have someone who's there supporting me, a partner who's there. Yeah. Also making sure, supporting me and pushing for my dreams because he realizes who I am. And he supports you yeah. 100%. Yeah, so that happens. I think I'll say for me, COVID, having those two kids, it just did something. And also... You know, you want to say as you're growing, you know, I just turned 42 this year. I know other people are coming 42 is not that old. But there's something, man, that happens when you turn 40. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, 
it's like you want to, you know, shed off something and leave it behind and just, yeah. you know. So I think it just around that, you know, from about 39, but 40 has definitely changed a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. Now you're doing things because you're like, you know, I'm not here for a long time. Uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to die in my 50s or whatever, but yeah. I'm saying whatever we're doing now, Definitely. you want to make sure yeah. that your kids, when they say, he has something that, you know, this is what my ma my mother was this. Yeah. And not die with your talent. Yeah. You not die. You know, I made a point where I want to do everything that I feel like God gave me. That's wonderful. So I want to make sure that so that when it's time, you know, you know, I don't know what happens after death, but all I'm yeah. saying is I want to make sure that I do everything that I know I was meant to do. Yeah. My purpose. Living your life, yeah. you know, for a purpose. Yeah. And with a purpose. Yeah. Very, very strong, very, very strong words. And what it does, Jade, really resonates a lot, you know, about self-discovery, which is very important. Mm. Unfortunately, we have to end today's episode. And we haven't covered even half of <laughs> of what Teddy has done, you know, in her work and what she's about. But um, make sure that you join us next week, Monday at um, 6.30 for part two of this interview. Thank you very much for tuning in to Eswatini TV. And Teddy, thank you so much for joining us for part Part one of this interview. So this much, conversation Uncle. will definitely continue yeah. in the second part of our um, conversation. Thank, thank you. you for joining us in the studio and to Eswadini. Thank you very much for watching the show. It's a kappa with Nam Debo. It's a love and light. Good night. <laughs>